dear student friends welcome to the new semester first of all i thank each and every one for your greatest support and interest in our channel which makes our channel to the next level let us go into the problem solving session on double integrals in cartesian coordinate in today's session we are going to learn some basics and simple problems on double integrals Now, before going into the double integral just we have a quick recap on integration which we learned in our school level the integration based on the limits based on the limits it is split into two types the first one is indefinite integral and the second one is definite integral indefinite integral represents the family of all anti derivative of a function f of x here no specific limits are given for the integration so we simply integrate f of x with respect to dx and we will get an answer capital f of x will write the arbitrary constant c but in the case of definite integral it evaluates the integral for a function f of x over a specific interval a comma b as finite limits of integration for example we say integral 0 to 1 x square dx it is going to be a definite integral now based on the convergence of the integral it can be splitted into proper integral and improper integral if both the limits of the integration are finite then we are going to say it as a it is a proper integral if both the limits of the integration are going to be finite and the integrand f of x is well defined and finite on the interval a comma b while you go for the improper integral either one or both limits of the integration are in finite or the integrand f of x becomes unbounded within the integration interval now you can see i can write the example integral 0 to infinity f of x dx or integral minus infinity to infinity f of x dx so in this chapter we are always going to deal with definite integrals sometime it is going to be finite sometime it is going to be infinite double integration double integrals occur in many practical problems both in science and in engineering it is used in problems involving area volume mass center of mass etc in probability theory that we are going to learn in the future semester it is very much helpful to evaluate probabilities of the two dimensional continuous random variables etc etc if you want to learn more application you can just google it you can find the more information there so double integration in cartesian coordinate that means we are going to do the double integration in xy coordinate a double integral is computed by repeated single variable integration integrate with respect to one variable treating the other variable as a constant so simply double integral over a region r f of x comma y dy dx or sometimes we write dx dy this is known as inner integral and this is known as outer integral while you do the integration always we have to consider the inner integral first so i have to take like this i am going to integrate this f of x comma y first with respect to x so while you integrate with respect to x you should consider all the other variables as constant complete the evaluation of inner integral then we have to go for the outer integral we have to integrate with respect to y now as i said we are going to deal with definite integrals we can take some limits f of x comma y dy dx i can write the limits just like a b c d now if we have dy and this c and d represents the limits of y for the outer integral dx a and b are the limits so c d or y limits a b or x limits so i can write like this so i can just write the limits here limits for y is y equal to c to d and limits for x is x equal to a to b now you can easily guess what is going to happen here if i gave dx dy then my inner limits are a to b because this is the limit corresponding to x then the outer limits are going to be c to d that is the limits for y so the y limits are c and d and the x limits are a and b automatically we write integral f of x comma y the inner integral is dx so i have to write the x limits then i have to write the y limits for the 
outer integral. Hope you understand. Next, there comes a question. While we speak about the limits A, B, C and D, what is this A, B, C and D? Are they constants or all are variables or some of them are constant and some of them are variables? These are all the questions arrive in our mind. Now we are going to see one by one what are all the cases we have. Let us consider the case one. I am taking A, B, C, D. All are constants. Now before solving the problem, we have to visualize what is happening here just we go to our school days fifth and sixth standard geometry now we are going to draw some simple line first let us draw the axis this is my x-axis in school days you remember all these stories x-axis means y equal to zero then y-axis x equal to zero these are all very basic now see our limits my limits are x equal to a to b y equal to c to D. I said A, B, C, D are constant. It may be any real number. For understanding, I am taking all are positive. In addition, I am going to take B is greater than A and D is greater than C. Now, the line X equal to A is very obvious. Any line parallel to Y axis is X equal to constant. Since we say B is greater than A, the first line will come here, x equal to a. And the next line, x equal to b, will come on the right side. That is x equal to b. Similarly, any line parallel to x-axis, we say it as y equal to constant. So y equal to c comes above the x-axis because we consider a, b, c, d all are positive and d is greater than c. So we will get the line y equal to d above the line y equal to c. So in this unit, it is very important students. You should have to use at least two, three colors when you draw the diagram. Then visualization will be very easy. So these lines x equal to a, b, c, d are important for me. The x axis and y axis are the dummy variable just for the plotting the graphs we are using. So I should not bother about this x and y axis. Now from this figure I can see this regions are open. All these regions are open. The one and one closed region I can find in the middle. This is what we are evaluating. This is the region we are finding. So if all the elements A, B, C, D are constant, then it represents finding the region of a rectangle. So in the double integral, if all the data are constant, then we are evaluating a double integral to find the region of a rectangle. In addition, suppose elements are 0 to 2, 0 to 2, if they are same, we are finding the region of a square. Hope you understand. Then let us go into the other cases. Region bounded by the functions. Now, when you go for the double integration, if all are constant, no issues. If I am taking something as variable, I can take either x as a variable in terms of y or y as a variable in terms of h. Now, I am going to consider x as constant. So, I will take x equal to a and x equal to b. And very important note students, whenever you go for the double integral, always the constant limit is going to be my outer integral a to b dx. If both the limits are constant, no issues. If one of the limit is going to be constant, that is always a outer integral. Now, y is going to be variable. So, we keep y as my inner integral. So, here I am going to write y as a function of x in both the upper limit and the lower limit. So, I am going to take y equal to g of x for the lower limit and y equal to h of x for the upper limit. Hope you understand. So, when there is a constant limit for only one variable, that should be always in the outer integral. So, dx, integral a to b dx, then f of x comma y dy. I am going to write this as g of x to h of x. Done. So as usual, I am going to take the axis x and axis y. Here x equal to a and x equal to b are constant. It might be any real number. I am going to just consider as positive for visualizing the figure. Let us draw x equal to a and x equal to b. Now, for the case of y, I don't we know. Can it visualize may be this any also. function Nothing of big. x. So I am just simply drawing the two curves g of x and h of x. Now you would have already guessed this is the region 
R and we are going to find the region R using the double integration. Hope you understand. So if X is constant, Y is going to be the variable. Now you would have guessed case 3. I am going to fix now Y as constant and X as variable. So for my X limit, I am going to write x is a function of y, g of y and x equal to h of y. Now y is going to be constant c and d. Let us have a visualization. Now as we said y is constant. So my outer integral contains dy that is the limit c to d. Then my inner integral contains the function g of y to h of y f of x comma y. So you can easily grasp the idea now. Now for this also we can have a visualization. So I am taking the axis here y is constant. So y is equal to c and y is equal to d. Assuming all are in the first quadrant, I am just giving the image. So y equal to c and y equal to d. Now we do not know the curve g of y. It may be anything g of y, h of y. Just for the visualization, I am drawing g of y like this and h of y. Now we are going to find the region which is bounded by all the four curves. This is what the region we are going to evaluate. So now you understand in a crystal clear way, whenever there is a double integration, all my limits are going to be constant. It is going to represent the region of a rectangle. We are going to find the area of the rectangle. If any one of the variable is constant, that will come to the outer integral. Here always we have constant 1, constant 2. And the inner integral we have variable 1, variable 2, f of x comma y. Accordingly, we have to write whether it is dx dy or dy dx. Hope you understand. These are all the three classifications we have.